Hello and welcome to the Orwell Astronomical Society podcast for November 2015, the start of the fifth year of these podcasts. This month is a good month for observing the planets, but only early in the morning. Five of them are reasonably well placed to view, but you will need binoculars to see Uranus and Neptune. Jupiter is the best of the bunch to view this month, best looked at through binoculars or a small telescope. The point to note here is that if you do use binoculars, make sure that you use a camera tripod or a wall or fence to rest the binoculars on. This will stop the inevitable handshaking and make for some wonderful views. You should see the four largest moons of Jupiter, or sometimes just one, two or three, as some of them can be hiding behind or in front of the planet itself. If you have a reasonably powerful pair of binoculars or a telescope, then you might even be able to see some of the stripes on the planet's surface. So where to find Jupiter? It is currently in the constellation Leo, and Jupiter is the higher of two really bright objects that stand out in the south-southeast throughout the month just before dawn. The other bright object is Venus, slightly lower than Jupiter, but quite a bit brighter. Venus is in the constellation of Virgo. Mars, the red planet, may also be seen in the south-southeast just before sunrise, also in the constellation of Virgo, very near to Venus. And these three planets form a nice little triplet together. Saturn is not visible this month, but if you are intrepid enough to look for Uranus and Neptune, you may find Uranus in the south in the constellation Pisces around 11pm, and Neptune in the south in the constellation of Aquarius around 8pm throughout the month. The Moon is also fun to observe, with binoculars or a small telescope. Don't however fall into the trap of looking at it while the Moon is full. While not dangerous, it is very bright and may cause some discomfort for a short while. It is much better to look at the Moon when it is a crescent up to about half Moon phase. This way the light from the Sun is arriving from the side, and so craters and mountains have a greater shadow relief and hence show up better. And the best time to view the Moon this month is in the early to middle of the month around New Moon, which is on the 11th. Full Moon is on the 25th. Meteor showers this month include the Taurids around the 5th month, fifths of the month, sorry, with a zenithal hourly rate of 10. But it is an extended maximum, and so although not very many, they are fairly well spread out. And the Leonid meteor shower occurs on the 16th to the 23rd of November. Expect around 15 per hour. There is a comet to look out for this month, Comet C 2013 US 10 Catalina. And it's brightening and expected to peak at around a magnitude 4.7 during November, probably towards the end. It is in Virgo amongst the planet lineup and best seen at the end of the month. And this magnitude means that this should be quite easily seen as a naked eye object and look out for any tail that might develop. Right, now we'll look at the sky and try to find some interesting things to look at. So take this podcast with you and find a nice viewing location with a good view of the sky with little or no light pollution, especially from sodium lights. I'm assuming now that it's 8pm at the start of the month. Look north. Can you see the plough or the Big Dipper or the saucepan? This is the well-known group of seven stars in the shape of a ladle or saucepan. At this time of year it's base downwards or the right way up. Find the two stars on the right hand end, the two stars away from the handle of the saucepan. Now trace a line upwards from these two stars and the next star you'll come across is Polaris, the pole star. Now look at the three stars forming the handle of the plough. Look closely at the middle of these three stars. How many stars can you see? You should be able to see two stars very close together. And these two stars, called Alcora Mizar, used to be used as an eyesight test for the military. Now look towards the east, which is your right. You should see a fuzzy group of stars called the Pleiades. This looks really good in binoculars. It is a group of really young, really hot stars, only a few million years old. And you can still see some of the gas or nebulosity they formed out of left swirling around them. Now look up. You will see a W or an M, whichever way you look at it, made out of five stars. This is Cassiopeia. Now look carefully for a long arc going through the length of Cassiopeia. Can you see what looks like a long, thin cloud? This is the Milky Way, and you're now looking towards the centre of our galaxy. You will need to be in a very dark site to be able to see this clearly. Finally, on to Leo. 
For this you will need to get up early in the morning. Worth doing to see the planets I mentioned earlier. First find Orion in the southwest. Now look due south and then look up about two thirds of the way from the horizon to overhead. You should see a backwards question mark. This is the lion's head. Now find the bottom bright star of this question mark. This is Regulus, the brightest star in Leo. I hope that this podcast has given you some ideas of what to look out for this month. There is plenty more out there to see, and I recommend that you look on the internet, Astronomy Magazine, or in an astronomy book or sky map to see what else is out there and where to look for it. Another useful tool, as always, is the Planisphere, which you can use to find out exactly what is overhead at any time and date of the year. And these are readily available from any good bookshop. Listen out next month for December's highlights. Bye for now.